Notice this public hearing was disseminated to all local media outlets via electronic format on October the 12th, 2015, with the second notice provided on October the 17th. Notice of this hearing was also made known on the legislative website. Today we only have one item on the, tonight's agenda, the executive appointment of Ms. Catherine D. Gale to serve as a member of the Civil Service Commission Board of Commissioners. Great. Mr. Baza, Chairman Baza, Mr. Lamarina, Lou Hongi, Edith Panglinen, John Nawakowski, and Danny Leon Grill. Oh, it's all just in support, huh? Okay. Mr. Chairman. Um. Honorable Benjamin Cruz, Mr. Chairman, Senator Ogden, Senator Torres, um, thank you for Huffaday and thank you for giving me the opportunity to testify on uh, Catherine Gale. I, as a chairman and my commissioners, uh, fully support the appointment of Ms. Gale. I'm sure you are aware the Civil Service Commission still plays a vital role in managing the merit system of the government we take our work very seriously, and the responsibilities that uh, the responsibilities that we have, spending a lot of long long hours to read those packets. You know, I'm very happy to know that even Miss Gill is willing to take that that with uh, with her her experience and training, her background, you know, with, in personnel, human resources management, is really a plus for for us. We do a lot of human relations, you know, a lot of people management, but at the same time, we want to make sure that there's a balance in the merit system. We're not pro-employees, we're not pro-management, we're pro-merit system. So we want, I want to assure the, 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 the committee and the senators that that's us, our role. And they always say that, who is the Civil Service Commission? And they say, oh, it's not the executive director, it's really the commissioners. It's true. The director and the staff, you know, supports us. But we, when we make decisions, it's independent. They can do post audits on other other issues in the government of Guam. Complaints that come in, but at the end of the day, we're independent. We can actually tell the staff that we're not going to agree with their recommendation. We can do that as well. That's the independence that we have. I would like to strongly recommend Ms. Catherine Gill to you for your kind consideration to be the next commissioner. You know. It's not a very easy task, and you know we welcome every you know the people that want to step up to the plate and do this kind of work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Senator Lamarina. Half a day, Vice Speaker Cruz, Senators Agan and Torres. As the Executive Director for the Civil Service Commission, I am appearing before you today to support the appointment of Ms. Catherine Gale. Ms. Gale brings a wealth of knowledge, diversity, and experience in the human resources and management field as reflected in the various positions, positions she has held. Her years of experience will be an asset when hearing and deliberating cases brought before the commission. The commissioners of the Civil Service Commission are hardworking individuals who not only commit to attend hearings two to three nights a week, but also spend countless hours prior to each hearing to review all documents exhibit and exhibits submitted. Based on Ms. Gale's work and experience, I know that she will be dedicated and committed to the task. I humbly request your support for Ms. Gale's appointment so that we can continue to achieve the goals and objectives of the CSC in preserving the integrity of the merit system. Thank you very much. Anybody have questions of these two? If not, well, thank you very much. I I'm glad you finally realized there's more power as the chairman of the board rather than being the executive director. And that's why you've accepted it for life. Um, <laughs> we'll now hear from the nominee. <laughs> Thank you very much for accepting the appointment. Thank you, sir. 
Havaday, Vice Speaker Cruz, Senator Torres, and Senator Uggen. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be uh, invited to come here tonight and to be uh, nominated for the uh, Civil Service Commission. I look forward to the opportunity of serving both the government and the island of Guam. As you see, I have over 15 years' experience in the human resource field, uh, much of it dealing with the cases that I believe that are similar to the cases that the Civil Service Commission would uh, deal with. Uh, through those years, uh, learning and uh, developing the ability to review with uh, an open eye, uh, unbiased, um, looking at all the facts that are put in front of you, and I hope to take this experience and bring it to the Commission. But at the same time, learn uh, from the Commission. I think this is an incredible opportunity um, to learn from the Commission and the Commissioners who have a great wealth of experience and from the cases that are brought forward. I feel uh, through my years, I believe, I've been perceived as a person with great integrity, a person who is fair and consistent in her review and in her actions as they've dealt with different uh, HR-related matters with a workplace and I hope to carry this into the Commission. I thank you again for having me here tonight, and if you have any questions in terms of my background. Well, thank you very much, first, for being willing to serve on the Commission. I scheduled the hearing as soon as I could because, I mean, I know how important this Commission is, and I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to have any issues as it relates to um, quorum. and. Uh, this nomination will go before the legislature this week for, for confirmation because I feel it imperative that uh, we keep this commission fully staffed to be able to move um, this forward and because I be really believe it's important that we protect the merit system. And um, they weren't joking about the hours. I hope you understand that. No. <laughs> The, the number of nights that they meet. And, yeah, no, no, <laughs> it, it is it is a commitment. And uh, I was looking, I was looking through the website and looking at all the, looking at the cases, looking at the agenda, and I, I understand. And your yeah. husband's okay with that? Yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> he's committed to, <laughs> this is a partnership. <laughs> I think it has to, to be a cook. partnership. Yes. Yeah. And um, I know, notice that, have you finished all your studies for your MBA? Well, I finished all of the uh, the courses and my final uh, dissertation, which I submitted in uh, this year in June. Uh, but through this particular university, it's a very uh, lengthy process, and it goes through several panels of review. And it's at its final stage now, and I'll be notified in November uh, just what type of degree it will be conferred. So the postgraduate is completed. You get a postgraduate degree, but at what level? Uh, I won't know until the final review of the paper that I submitted. Well, con congratulations. Thank I, you. Yeah, no, it, they'll, it, it, that's a little you example of the work. You can do your dissertation with the, <laughs> the studies you do on this commission now. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's an example. I mean, that it was um, thousands of pages of reading <laughs> and preparation and, and, and research for that particular paper. So perhaps I can apply some of that uh, to this upcoming work here. Great. I, I, just, I noticed that you have considerable experience. So. I have really have no questions. I just am really mm -hmm. excited that we have someone with this kind of background from the private mm -hmm. sector. I mean, we've taken them from the government sector and we've moved them all from being in the Civil Service Commission up to the, up to the board. Um, but mm -hmm. what we need now are those of you from the private sector. I know Sherman's very big on island. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's very mm -hmm. nice to have uh, those of you in the private sector willing to step up and, and, and come on the board uh, to mm -hmm. lend your expertise in your uh, experience. Thank you. Mrs. Scout, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And uh, it, it's exciting to see that, that you're well qualified and you had a lot of uh, human resource training and experience. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of experience with the Civil Service Commission mm -hmm. in, at working in the government. And one thing that I can say is, is they, they certainly take their responsibility in determining what is ultimately the livelihoods of, of the government employees mm -hmm. to heart. And I've seen that in their dedication <laughs> at, the serv at the Civil Service Commission. But I was wondering, you mentioned that you've, you've reviewed, you've gone on the website and you've looked at that. So you have an understanding of, of what um, 
the responsibilities are and what their caseload is presently. Mm -hmm. And we recently passed a, a law that um, mandated the, the use of an administrative law, law judge to help facilitate and accelerate the disposition of cases. Mm -hmm. But um, have you had any thoughts about what you see as, as some of the challenges uh, in the commission and, and how you could lend some assistance to your, your fellow commissioners um, mm -hmm. upon appointment and, and confirmation? Well, I'm, I'm very new, so it was just a cursory review of, of the cases and uh, of the website and the agenda. So at this time, not, but I, I do understand about the, um, the law judge that's been, I know it's passed and it's going through a process right now of re review, and I think that is a, a fantastic move, a step forward in terms of perhaps a better management of the caseloads is to have that particular role in place. Um, but in terms of what I can bring, I... I, I maybe somewhat from the, the private sector, but I know the civil, civil Service Commission and government is quite distinct, and the rules that are uh, in play are actually quite distinct. I'll be able to apply uh, the same, I guess I would say, process in the sense that even in, in the private sector, what really counts is evidence and facts and rules. So right. although one might look at a case and say, oh, this is an obvious decision, you must really understand the rules that are at play and then the evidence that applies to those rules. Um, so I'll bring that in. But I do know that the particular commission members that I'm working with themselves are extremely experienced. So I think from really the, the, at the get-go, it's going to be a lot of me learning uh, yes. from, our, from my fellow commission members. And of course, it's one of those jobs where they give so much of themselves and they're, they're really held in a, a very bright public light and public mm -hmm. eye because the, you know, as we said, it, the, the matters do affect the, the livelihoods of the employees. And, uh, you know, I commend you for, for wanting to, to serve in this way because I think of, of, of all the boards, this is probably the one that, that they probably take home with them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you, you're professional, but it, it affects you in such a way because you are dealing so much with, with people in their lives and, and, uh, and the families that, that are affected by their jobs. Yes. But um, I just want to say that, you know, congratulations for, for uh, stepping up to the role and thank you very much for, for wanting to serve in this capacity. Mm. And uh, I want to say, too, that when you come on board, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the company because they, they really are quite amazing people mm. and, and, and dedicated beyond um, the ordinary, in my estimate. Yeah, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and um, Mrs. Gail, I too also would like to thank you very much for extending yourself and and allowing you to serve in this capacity. I think it's very critical as this is a one of the agencies that really has a tremendous amount of autonomy in terms of affecting people's lives, the employees inclusive of the management of these agencies. So I thank you very much for leaning forward. Very impressed with, uh, I know the chairman had mentioned a little earlier, but very impressed with your human resources background, mm -hmm. just so that for the uh, satisfaction of our people out there in the community who are watching, uh, you initiated, at least just based on your resume, since 1997, you mm -hmm. were the assistant vice president for human resources for a particular private company. Mm -hmm. Then you transitioned to another company in 2003 and served as a human resources manager and then continued in 2008 to a different company, in, all in the private sector, as the vice president of the, and the head of human resources. And then you presently serve as the human resources director for DFS. Mm -hmm. uh, Guam LP. So that's 18 years collectively of working mm -hmm. and serving with uh, human resources per, from a human resources perspective. So mm -hmm. just with that kind of experience and that kind of knowledge, I'm very pleased to be here to not only listen to your comments and to uh, highlight some of your expertise, but I'd like to, to ask you uh, if you can extend yourself just a little further. Mm -hmm. In addition to entertaining all of these cases as they come out and review them, I know that that's going to be very time consuming. Mm -hmm. But with 18 years of wonderful, uh, outstanding expertise in this arena, if there are any laws that we can amend or update 
or if there are any rules and regs that you consider that need to be updated to reflect not only technology, uh, not only the processes, I'm asking you to please share that with the, the chairman and with commi fellow commission members, with mm -hmm. the executive director, and then also with the oversight chair, because we always want to make sure that we have a system in place that is fair and applies equity across the board in terms of making your decisions. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned because it really impacts the lives of, of many of our people. So I, I ask you if you're able to, because you bring so much expertise in the human resources department, I think that that would always be very helpful in terms of helping us, guiding us from the policy making perspective in terms of looking at laws and then helping fellow commission members as well as the executive director with looking at rules and regulations that perhaps could be enhanced. Mm -hmm. But there, I know that you have some very good laws and policies that are already in place, but let me close with this. You have some uh, outstanding commission members that you uh, I'm sure have met <coughs> and working with the executive director and, and with a wonderful staff of management at Civil Service Commission, I certainly wish you the best in your service. And once again, thank you for extending yourself to the people of Guam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much, and I, I think they've said it all. Okay, thank you all. So, thank, uh, be no, thank you very much, and we consider right. this heard. Did you want to speak? No? <laughs> It's all right. All right, okay. fine. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you very right. much. All right. Thank you. Thank you for all the testimonies. Committee considers the um, executive appointment of Ms. Catherine Gale to have been heard. The committee will continue to accept testimony um, for a couple of days. And um, otherwise, if not, we will be reporting this to the um, floor for action this week. Danny, I'm surprised I haven't gotten around.